Welcome to World Med School. My name is Diane Hevler. I'm Professor of Medicine in Chief of the HIV AIDS Division at University of California, San Francisco. The topic of this lecture is HIV symptoms. How does a patient with HIV present? The clinical manifestations of HIV can result from inflammatory reactions due to HIV, such as the retroviral syndrome and chronic diarrhea. The most apparent and dramatic manifestations of HIV are due to immune impairment that increase susceptibility to infections that occur in immune-competent hosts, such as tuberculosis and bacterial pneumonia, to unusual opportunistic infections, such as pneumocystis, and to certain malignancies, such as lymphoma. The clinical manifestations of HIV increase in frequency and severity with CD4 decline. They are influenced by regional disease epidemiology. For example, tuberculosis is more common in tuberculous endemic areas. We can think of HIV in terms of stages. The first stage of HIV we can call primary infection. After infection is established with HIV, two-thirds of the patients develop symptoms called the acute retroviral syndrome. These typically present one to six weeks after infections and overall are characterized as a flu-like illness. They can affect all parts of the body. They can produce systemic symptoms, such as fever and weight loss. They can affect the central nervous system. Um, causing difficulty in concentration in an aseptic meningitis. They can present as pharyngitis. They can cause diffuse lymphadenopathy. Patients can have a diffuse rash. They can have myalgias and gastrointestinal symptoms. But what are the most common clinical manifestations of the acute retroviral syndrome? In one series, fever was the most common manifestation pre present in 86% of patients lethargy or fatigue in 74%, myalgias, rash, headache, and pharyngitis in about half of the patients. Diffuse lymphadenopathy is also very common in the acute retroviral syndrome. After primary infection and seeding of lymphatic tissues, stage two follows, which has been called asymptomatic. This stage lasts for a period of years. It's characterized by few or no symptoms except for lymphadenopathy. However, the term asymptomatic is misleading because during this time period, due to the replication of HIV, there is ongoing inflammation and end organ effects in, for example, the heart and kidney in the presence of declining CD4 cells. All patients progress to stage three, a symptomatic stage. This stage is characterized by constitutional symptoms, such as fever and night sweats, diarrhea, and weight loss. Dermatologic manifestations are very common during the symptomatic stage. These include conditions such as seborrheic dermatitis, shown here, characterized by red scaly plaques in a facial distribution and on the scalp. Mucocutaneous conditions are also very common. Patients can develop shingles due to varicella zoster, also onchomycosis such as tinea pedis. Oral hairy leukoplakia is one of the characteristic manifestations of HIV. It is associated with Epstein-Barr virus, which infects superficial tongue layers. Its name comes from the hairy projections that are observed in the keratinized squamous epithelium. As shown here in this picture, it's characterized by a ribbed appearance on the side of the tongue. It's painless. Another characteristic mucocutaneous finding during this phase is oral thrush. It's caused by Canada albicans. 
and presents as white plaques or curd-like exudates. It can be seen as shown in this picture in the hard and soft palate. Patients can also experience beefy red oral mucosis. In women, vaginal candidiasis is a typical presentation. Patients presenting with any of these findings should always be offered HIV testing. Tuberculosis is the most common opportunistic infection that occurs during the course of HIV. There are a wide variety of clinical presentations. These can include pulmonary TB, extrapulmonary TB, and miliary tuberculosis. The symptoms are usually present for weeks to months. When the CD4 cell counts are low, we see more disseminated tuberculosis or A typical presentations of TB. Let me show you pictures of a few of these types of tuberculosis. In pulmonary tuberculosis, symptoms are present for weeks to months. This is in contrast to bacterial pneumonias, also common in patients with HIV, where symptoms are, present, are present for days. Patients with pulmonary tuberculosis present with fever, productive cough, and weight loss. Cavitation may be seen and is often seen in patients with high CD4 cell counts, but rarely found in those with low CD4 cell counts. Miliary, or disseminated tuberculosis, is more common in patients with low CD4 cell counts and is an AIDS-defining illness. The wasting syndrome, characterized by disseminated TB and a profound weight loss, was referred to as slim disease in Africa and was how AIDS was recognized there. Widespread TB occurs in all organs, including lymph nodes in the abdomen, and can cause patients a great deal of discomfort. Extrapulmonary tuberculosis, or tuberculosis outside of the lung, is much more common in persons with HIV compared to those without HIV who have tuberculosis. Some of the examples of extrapulmonary tuberculosis, as shown in the pictures here, include TB pleurisy. Cervical lymphadenopathy, shown here, also referred to as scrofula, and spinal disease or POTS disease. Stage 4 is the final stage of HIV infection and is the name of AIDS. There are over 30 conditions that meet the clinical case definition of AIDS, and often more than one illness is present. These can be categorized into various groups, including AIDS-defining conditions that are constitutional symptoms, such as AIDS wasting, characterized by profound weight loss, and chronic diarrhea in the absence of an identifiable pathogen. There are many opportunistic infections that meet the case definition of AIDS, one of these shown here includes progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, a central nervous system disease that affects the white matter, where patients present with neurologic focal findings. Malignancies also are included in AIDS-defining conditions, such as central nervous system lymphoma. AIDS conditions include HIV-associated cardiomyopathy, HIV-associated nephropathy, and HIV-associated dementia. Now I will discuss a few of the classic and common AIDS-defining conditions. Kaposi sarcoma is caused by human herpes virus 8, or HHV8. As shown here, it is characterized by patients presenting with purple patches, plaques, and papular lesions. These lesions progress gradually. Cutaneous disease is very common, as shown here with the lesions on the gum. Kaposi sarcoma can also cause visceral disease, including pulmonary and lymphatic disease at low CD4 cell counts. Here is shown the characteristic radiographic finding in pulmonary Kaposi sarcoma. Pneumocystis pneumonia is a hallmark AIDS-defining condition. It is caused by the fungus Pneumocystis urvecchiae.
patients present with a gradual onset over a period of weeks of fever, dry cough, and chest pain. Patients often complain of shortness of breath. The lung exam may be normal, but it may also include crackles and ronchi. The chest radiograph as shown here typically reveals diffuse interstitial infiltrates. There are many gastrointestinal diseases that are AIDS-defining conditions. These include the parasite cryptosporidiosis that affects the gastrointestinal system and causes profound diarrhea. Patients can have as many as 20 to 30 bowel movements per day. Salmonella infections, non-typhi salmonella infections, such as salmonella typhimurium, are also common AIDS-defining conditions and present as fever, diarrhea, and weight loss. Non-tuberculous mycobacterium, such as mycobacterium avium, occur in patients with very low CD4 cell counts. These patients present with fever and weight loss, and their organs include massive infiltration of mycobacteria, as shown here. Central nervous system infections are also common AIDS-causing conditions. Shown here is toxoplasmosis, a parasite of the central nervous system, which can present as seizures, headache, and shows ring-enhancing lesions on CT or MRI. Cryptococcal meningitis is caused by a fungus and is one of the most common opportunistic infections in advanced AIDS patients in Africa. It is caused by the encapsulated fungus Cryptococcus neoformans. AIDS conditions also include diseases of the eye. Cytomegalovirus retinitis is, presents with painless visual loss, and on fundoscopic exam is characterized by a ketchup and cottage cheese appearance. Squamous cell carcinoma of the eye is exclusively seen in sub-Saharan Africa and presents as lesions shown here on the sclera. In general, children present with similar AIDS-defining conditions as adults, with a few exceptions. One of these is lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia. This is an inflammatory condition with polyclonal proliferation of B and T cells. Symptoms are present for weeks to months. Children may present with cough and tachypnea, but no fever. There's a classic reticular pattern as shown here on chest radiograph. We started this lecture asking the question, how do patients with HIV present? The answer to that question is it depends on the disease stage. As we have discussed in stage one, primary infection is characterized by a flu-like illness. Stage two, is referred to as asymptomatic symptomatic infection, where patients may have lymphadenopathy. But actually, this is misleading but because chronic inflammation is ongoing and causing end organ damage. Stage 3, or symptomatic infection, is associated with conditions such as thrush, oral hairy leukoplakia, TB, and bacterial pneumonias. On average, 10 years after HIV infection, patients developed AIDS-defining conditions when CD4 cell counts are approximately 200. Some of these conditions include pneumocystis pneumonia, toxoplasmosis, cryptococcosis, and in the very end stages of disease, when CD4 cell counts reach 50, patients develop conditions such as CMV retinitis and mycobacterium avium. So the key points from this lecture are HIV disease symptoms are due to inflammation secondary to HIV and to the immunologic damage which predisposes to infections and malignancies. HIV disease symptoms include infections, malignancies, syndromes, and end organ damage. They occur at predictable CD4 thresholds. They vary in distribution globally and are preventable, as you will hear in a subsequent lecture, with antiretroviral therapy. Thank you for attending World Med School.